So the next video in this playlist is going to seem a little bit confusing because we were just talking about water and all of the tests with all of that. And now I'm going to kind of switch gears and we're going to talk about the FD&C colorants that can be used within bath bombs and really how much you should be using them. That is a conversation that should be had right away in this format, if only because I made these colorants that are going into all of the other bath bombs throughout the thing. So I want to insert this information right at the beginning and I'm going to tell you more about said information and said video and said colorants in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for week 26 of year three and video number two in an eight part series, Back to Basics, Bath Bomb Edition. Now, if you've followed my channel, you know that I love doing the Back to Basics playlists. I love just doing an info dump into one place, make it easily accessible, shorter videos that are easier for you to manage and to get through while giving you the information that you may need on any step of the bath bomb journey. And as I said yesterday, we are working on crawling so we can walk, so we can run. Doing it this way and going back to the basics and really thinking about the bath bomb powder that is in front of you is very important to ensure that you get consistent bath bombs 100% of the time. As I said in the previous video, Soap and Clay recently made their one millionth bath bomb. So I do know a thing or two about this. That said, this is just my information. This is my brain working with the chemistry of, you know, this very basic chemical reaction, as well as having done this for a very long time across a number of different uh, environments, uh, shipping conditions, all of the things. And so, you know, take it for what it is. But for this particular one, we are going to be talking about the FD&C colorants, which is not something I do a whole lot on this channel as I tend to prefer micas. But since we're going to be doing some color embeds, because I really want to show you what can happen within the inside of a bath bomb if things get too wet or too dry, I obviously want to use FD&C colorants for that because micas are not going to give a nice color surprise bloom in the bathtub like you would expect from your FD&Cs. Now, first up, when you're using FD&C colorants, it is very important to verify through your vendor that they are batch certified, that they are approved by the FDA. Because remember, bath bombs are a cosmetic. This is something that is actually controlled and governed by the FDA. And you need to make sure that you are using colorants that are approved for this specific use and that are not going to have any sort of harmful whatevers. Getting things off of Amazon or the like when it comes to your FD&C colors I do not recommend, but certainly anything that you're getting to use within your cosmetics. And so most FDNCs are going to be a bloom within water. And so going back to what I said yesterday about how water is important, cool. We're going to insert that by blooming the actual color and then putting that, you know, colored water. And I will be showing you some very concentrated colorants and kind of how I use them within bath bombs and what the appropriate usage rate and whatnot is. So let's get to the video. We can make all of the mixy mix things. We can talk more about the FD&C colorants and uh, we can continue on with this awesome series. Okay, so today we are going to talk about FD&C colorants. We will be using Nurture Soaps colorants and as you can see, these are all batch certified, which is very important when you are dealing with colors that are not micas. So batch certification effectively means that everything that has gone into this dye has been approved by the FDA. This is an approved usage for the particular colorant. And uh, you can go ahead and use the usage instructions on the websites. I strongly recommend 
looking at sites like Nurture Soap, like Mad Micah's, like Brambleberry, I suppose, if they do that. Actual soap sites to get your colorants for bath bombs. The reason for that is because Nurture and Mad Micah in particular have very good information on their batch certification. They have the INCI numbers. They have all of your batch numbers and they have your usage rates and will tell you right on the website in very easy to read and navigate forms whether or not they're going to be able to be used within a bath bomb. Because when you're working with colorants that you're just getting off of Amazon or whatever, it can get very difficult because that information is usually not available. And so you will, I mean, best case scenario, you are using a product that has like a weird off gas smell because it has like the ultramarines in it, which is bad when you are working with bath bombs. That's why you typically have such a hard time finding micas and blues or greens that can be used within bath bombs. Or worst case scenario, you're putting in a product that is dangerous to the skin and or, you know, bathtub or whatever, as far as staining goes, as far as any of the uh, carcinogen ratings, et cetera, and so forth. So always, always when you're working with bath bomb colors, Certainly, because that is considered a leave-on product. It is considered a cosmetic. There are different rules and, you know, really precautions that you need to be using within the bath bomb world, within the cosmetics world, than you would necessarily find within soaps. So it's very, very important to make sure that you have the right colorant and you're not doing anything that could be dangerous for your end user or will actually impact the performance or the make of your actual bath bomb. So... For these particular colors, I showed you all the different uh, colors that we are using today. These are all colors that require to be require a water bloom. And so what I tend to do is whenever I'm going to be making my brightly colored bombs that require my FD&C colorants, is I make them all up for all of the batches that I'm going to do for the day. So in this case, I have put in one half of a teaspoon of each of the colorants into these little, you know, measured thingies here. And I am adding two tablespoons of water to them. And then I'm going to mix them up within the thing. Now, these will be very, very potent colors because a half a teaspoon to two tablespoons, they're going to be very bright. They have the potential to stain. I do know that I will be working with some colors for the embeds because I do want those to be a little bit more potent than I would just a normal bath bomb because... If you have less of the bath bomb powder that's actually colored for an embed for a hidden surprise color bomb. So the potency is good, but I will be using these same, you know, colors within some regular all around, you know, colored bath bombs, but I'll be using them in lower amounts. So I have mixed this up to be a pretty potent color. A little will go a long way. Also, when you do stuff like this and you get stuff on your counter, the best way to clean those off is not going to be alcohol, but is going to be just some water. They do tend to wash away with water very easily. In the last video, we talked about the importance of using water within a bath bomb, i.e. I think water is the best thing to put into a bath bomb because it does help form a crust, and so it's going to be a more sturdy bomb. You're not going to be running into issues with it being overly dried out, as well as it, you know, cracking and breaking and just disintegrating within shipping or as it sits before you have an opportunity to wrap them. So we're going to, with this particular recipe, because the colorants themselves have been bloomed in water, so I know what all the colors are going to look like, I'm going to eliminate the water from the batch completely. So what we are doing is two cups of baking soda within this, uh, this container right now, no citric acid. We will put the one cup of citric acid in after we have put the colors in and made sure that we have the colors where we want them before we start the citric acid process, because as you know, baking soda, citric acid, and water, that's the fizzy liftoff. And that's a good thing for your bath bomb mixture because it, it does just enough of that fizzy liftoff that it's going to start searching out for you know the, the baking soda and the citric acid, the water is, and it's going to form a really sturdy, stable bomb when it's all said and done. But I don't want the water in beforehand, obviously, because I want to make sure that these colors are all dialed in. Now, these are for embeds, and so I'm going to be using a fair amount of color into each of these portions. I have separated a two-cup, you know, batch of baking soda, you know, bath bomb mixture 
into three portions. And so really what I am putting into here is almost a full tablespoon of color um, into each container. And so that's kind of a lot when it's all said and done. But remember, these are going to be embeds. So I will be using these within a white bomb for a color surprise. And so the potency is a really good idea, but I wanted to show you this process with this color, with these colorants to show you just what they do and how they're still going to be completely feasible and usable, even though we have essentially more water in this than what I put in the last videos, bath bomb batches. So it will be a wet solution. This is definitely going to be something that is bordering on a little bit too wet given the amount of water that has been put in by a nature of the, you know, the colorants. And that's okay. I have a lot of people always asking questions about substitutions for water. Like water is not working in the bath bomb. It makes them too wet. How about I use witch hazel, et cetera, and so forth. Witch hazel and alcohol, they are good to put in bath bomb powder that is already too wet. It is a great way to dry out your bath bomb powder if you are noticing that it is already starting to expand, if it really is getting too wet and you know that those bath bombs are going to start sagging while they are drying, witch hazel and rubbing alcohol are good for that because witch hazel and, and rubbing alcohol are astringents. What do astringents do? Well, they dry something out. So using them in place of water, uh, not a great idea. You're going to end up with a more dry powder with a more fragile bombs after the cure, even if the bomb itself was moldable. And so I really do not recommend using witch hazel or rubbing alcohol unless you have an overly wet batch of bath bombs. Another way to dry out an overly wet batch of bath bombs would be to use more baking soda. Now remember, this is not an exact science between baking soda and citric acid. The rule of thumb is two parts baking soda to one part citric acid, but you can go more on either you know side of the coin. So you can add more baking soda to a batch of bath bomb powder that's already looking like it might be too wet. And that is something that you will learn kind of as you go along and you get to know your bath bomb mixture, like what is considered too wet. Generally speaking, if you have no problem just forming it into a bomb in your hands without the use of into a sphere, without the use of a mold, it's definitely too wet. So you can always take a bit of your bath bomb powder and form it into a golf ball, you know, golf ball size sphere. And if that works and it doesn't have any sort of fragility at that moment, it's probably a little bit too wet. I would consider spritzing it with a little bit of witch hazel, spritzing it with some rubbing alcohol, or putting in a little bit of baking soda for that. For this particular recipe, it is very important that the moisture is there because I am putting it into a silicone mold and it does need to be damp enough that it's going to properly form that cut crust. Everything's going to dry out so I can get all of these embeds out without any sort of cracking or breaking or it just disintegrating into powder. So there's another way to put in your water for your color embeds. And there it is, a whole bunch of FDNC colorants that have been bloomed in water and added to bath bomb mixture in place of the water that I would normally keep within a basic bath bomb recipe to ensure that everything is going to be developing that crust, which is very important, and also very, very potently colored embeds which are really going to be a good idea for your hidden color bath bombs. But as I said within the video, definitely make sure that you are checking your batch numbers, making sure that they are proper to use within all of your cosmetics and check your usage rate. Now, me doing very, very potent colorants here, it works for all applications that I'm going to use these for throughout the rest of the day. So very, very potent. I use more of the water mixture when I'm wanting to put in embeds, so the color of the water will actually change. And then I'll use a lot less if I'm just wanting the overall color of the bath bomb to change because I'm essentially tinting more of the bath bomb powder in that instance, you know, and so the water will change colors along with it. But if I have an all white bath bomb and I'm putting in just a few embeds, I obviously want that little teeny tiny bit, maybe a quarter to a third of the total bath bomb weight to have enough color that it's going to bloom out nicely in the bathtub and give us a beautiful bloom. Also interesting to note is the color change within that red DNC 28, the pink, how it was really dark and a beautiful pink until I put the citric acid in and then it lightened up. Yeah, so 
that's a reaction that you can definitely experience with a lot of FD&C colors for a lot of different reasons. But in the, in the tub, when they bloom out, they're all going to go back to that really vivid pink color, which you will see throughout this playlist because we will be doing a video that is nothing but bloom so we can test all of the different recipes that I use, all of the different techniques, and all of the things. So stay tuned for that. You guys, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you are so far enjoying this, learning lots of stuff from this Back to Basics Bath Bomb playlist. I always love doing these. They're always a lot of fun for me. The Sudsers did request this, and so I like to do what the Sudsers want. So yeah, next up in the playlist is going to be doing more water tests within the bath bomb itself in the middle, as well as different embed testing and talking about substitutions. Now, I believe I talked about substitutions within this one, but we will be getting more into why you shouldn't use witch hazel or rubbing alcohol or whatnot in place of water, as well as what you can use. But like I said, first we're going to crawl. Next up, we're going to start walking. So thank you for joining me. I appreciate you ever so much. Always appreciate the Sudzers even more. That is a fact. There's no point in hiding it. And I'm out of here. But I will see you tomorrow for the next round in the Back to Basics Bath Bomb playlist. Bath Bomby Soapy Fun. Bye. Okay, so I am still hearing myself echo, and I don't understand why. And I really do need to get this, because at some point, if I'm going to be taken seriously, I should not have one of these on anymore.